Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. I'm Christy Shive and this morning we are back with Anna Kaysen. She's a Senior Extension Associate for Food and Nutrition. So often we hear um, food described as good and bad, healthy versus unhealthy. And it, we we both really want to be cautious with our language around this topic. Yeah, Christy, thanks for bringing that up. So first, let's start by just clarifying that we're talking about the nutrition side of foods, not thinking about bad foods in the terms of foods that may be past their usable date or spoiled foods. And we're also not thinking about good foods in the sense of just foods that we like. We're really thinking about how society often labels foods good Mm -hmm. and bad. When we think about like good and healthy foods as those foods that promote our health. And then a lot of times we think of quote unquote bad foods as those foods that they're not the ones that are commonly advertised as promoting our health. I do want to say that describing a food as good or healthy comes with good intentions. A lot of times there are foods that are more nutrient dense, meaning that they have these nutrients that are support our health, like protein, carbohydrates, fat, vitamins, and minerals, and more. But there's more to food than just those nutrients that it provides. There's a whole different aspect of food that we could kind of take a step back from and and think about as this food as a whole. So food gives us energy. It's in the form of calories, some more than others. So some foods are going to be energy dense, meaning that they are higher in calories. And then there are less energy dense foods that are just lower in calories Foods also give us other those other nutrients to support our health, but foods can also satisfy our sweet tooth. Maybe we're craving something sweet in the moment. There is going to be a food there that can satisfy that. It can be a source of comfort in a time of sadness. It's often a part of celebrations. We think about the holidays. A lot of times it's surrounding food or there's an integral food that is linked with this holiday or even birthdays, thinking about those celebrations. A lot of times there's some sort of sweet treat that you blow the candle out or something. Um, And it can also be a connection to our culture. So food has all these different aspects besides just the nutrition. Um, And then it's also linked with emotions, which is kind of getting into the nitty gritty of food. Why um, should we maybe avoid labeling food as bad or unhealthy? So like I I mentioned, it's food is a lot of times linked with emotions and Mm -hmm. when describe a food or a type of food or a category of food with a label like bad or unhealthy, the feelings of guilt and shame can come up when we eat these foods or when someone else is enjoying these foods and they hear these terms used to describe the foods, they may feel ashamed or embarrassed for eating them. So rather than pitting one food against another or by simplifying food to be one or the other, we can try taking just a neutral approach to food and thinking about all the things that food can provide us. Our verbiage is pretty important when it comes to food. Would you say that, Anna? Absolutely. Both for ourselves, it can really have an impact uh, internally, but then also for those that hear us talk about foods, whether it's friends, family members, coworkers, and especially those little ears that are always listening. If you've got children in the household uh, or if you're around them often, they're picking up on more than you think. Definitely. So can you give us any examples of maybe a negative um, way we can speak about food and shift it to a more positive? Yeah. So a lot of times I think we really hone in on the calorie aspect of food and we may say, oh, I don't need this food because blah, 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 or I've eaten so bad today, I can't have that. So that's, that's kind of having that moral judgment, those emotions tied to it. So instead of saying that we can, if someone offers you, let's say dessert after dinner, you can just politely say I'm full from dinner, but thank you or accept it and eat it and enjoy it. Um, Keeping it objective, especially when we're talking to children and describing foods by their texture, their color, their taste, all these things that we can see and experience when we're eating the foods is going to help also to keep that neutral approach. I think the whole um, reason we want to focus on the positive versus the negative is so that we can avoid uh, disordered eating behaviors um, and, and body image struggles. Thank you for joining us today on the Farm and Home Show, and we'll see you next time.